Okay, so um, I've been awake for a really long time, and uh, I should go to bed, but I was thinking that uh, I might just start making a few recordings of myself talking about what's going on uh, in my life at the moment for uh, the future. And, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure uh, if I've got anything particular to say, uh, but I, I had a pretty interesting day. I got a lot of things done today. So I thought I might just sort of go over what I did today. This here is a, um, a video that a, a, a friend of mine referred me to today, talking about everything you need to know to be a god, it was, it was pretty good, it was pretty good, and my friend here referring me to Scott Adams' new book that I hadn't heard of before, called God's Debris, and I was over here on Wikipedia and uh, read a little bit about it, I had no idea, 2001, Oh man, it's been out for a long time. I thought it was newer than that. So that's Scott Adams. Interesting. Anyway, it's an interesting thesis. Surmises that an omnipotent God annihilated himself from the Big Bang because an omniscient God would already know everything possible except his own lack of existence. And exists now as the smallest units of matter and the law of probability, or God's debris, hence the title. So that sounds like it'll be a bit of fun. I guess I'll buy it. I guess I'll buy it. Uh, so I sort of had this little hack to get my face on the screen. And it's not actually recording that. I'm recording the screen over here. So. Anyway, uh, I got a message. Uh, got invited to play a game. Thanks, mate. But really not interested in Facebook games. So uh, let me jump over here. This is my uh, Linux desktop. My email is here, NQ's Macquarie University. I've got a lot of emails down here that I haven't read, but I've just been trying to catch up uh, with, with my uh, uni work. I'm studying philosophy at the moment. At the moment, I've got the last word on the forums for the day. I sent my message out at 4.53, and it's 8.27 now. So what's that? It's about an hour and a half. No one's commented. Uh, I said, uh, the ring of power must be destroyed, which I thought was rather poetic of me. The question was a guy from Yosef Hassan. If you were to obtain this ring, being the ring of Gyges, doesn't matter how, and I'm not sure if it doesn't matter how, perhaps it does matter how, do you think that is how, how you acquired the ring? Uh, do you think you would abuse the power? And I sort of dodged his question and put my own little statement in there, the ring of power must be destroyed, which I thought was pretty good. And I've had the last word on this conversation down here which was actually into a really humorous remark from uh, from a guy called Andrew Wallace let's see if I can find his original let's see if I can find his original um, Uh, it doesn't seem to be here. Oh, maybe it's up under A. No. I'll tell you what, if I click on this, that'll load the whole. What's happening? Hmm. 
not exactly the snappiest computer. Oh yeah, this is something I was looking at earlier in the day. Asset trading, managed account. Don't think I'll get one. <laughs> Oh, there we go, you've got my username. So I just want to say here. So uh, this is from a guy called Andrew Wallace. A couple, four, four days ago. Signs and symptoms of Asperger's syndrome. One, an in inability to understand or recognize emotional cues and responses in other people. Two, difficulty in understanding white lies or diplomatic comments. Three, a propensity to obsess over the minute details of the subject that interest them and examine things in intricate detail. Four, suffer sufferers often develop logical systems to govern their interaction with other people so they can be seen to give correct response or emotional cues they don't understand. I'm just saying, which is great. And this is in reference to Immanuel Kant and, uh, and his work. Uh, this guy here is the course convener. He, he commented, uh, this might explain why Kant is attracted to someone with Asperger's, but I'm not sure it's really Kant himself. When I read Kant, my impression is that he does understand our emotional depth, but perhaps that's hard to see from the text we have here. And I, I put in my little comment that no one's replied to yet. I said I thought Andrew's Asperger illusions were brilliant. They were, they were pretty funny. And uh, then I, I gave um, the best commentary I've come across with respect to Kant's work is from Larkoff's and Johnson, Philosophy in the Flesh. So if I jump back over here, and you can see me in my Australia jersey today, um, this is the book that I'm talking about. The Philosophy in the Flesh. The Embodied Mind and... It's Challenge to Western Thought, George Larkoff and Mark Johnson. So that was uh, page 415. And since I really have no idea what I'm doing, I might as well just read you the part that I quoted in my email to the mailing list earlier today. For over two centuries now, Kantian moral theory has been the paradigm of pure rational morality. Kant believed that he had shown how absolute, universally binding moral principles can be derived from the essence of what he called pure practical reason. But if, as we have argued, there is no such thing as pure reason, then Kant must have actually been doing something quite different from unpacking the essence of pure practical reason. What he was doing, we shall argue, was brilliantly working out the entailments of a close-knit cluster of conceptual metaphors that he inherited from Western philosophy and the Judeo-Christian moral tradition. Morality in this tradition is based on what we have been calling the strict father model of the family. As we saw, when this strict father model is fleshed out with a number of independently motivated metaphors for morality, we then have strict father family morality which has long been dominant both within the Western moral tradition and in conservative versions of Christianity. Kant uses this strict father family morality as the key element of a theory of morality in general. In other words, Kant derives all morality as a version of strict father family morality. Kant understood this model perfectly, if only implicitly and he worked with unparalleled insight to develop the implications of the basic metaphors that define this morality. Obviously, Kant thought that he was doing something quite different, namely, analysing the essence of pure practical reason, and he would have vehemently denied the metaphorical character of morality, at least at the level of the fundamental moral principles he claimed to have identified. Nonetheless, as we will see, his moral theory does not reveal 
a priori rational foundations of universal morality. Rather, it is a working out of the logic of a small set of conceptual metaphors that define mainstream Western morality and that are based on the strict father family model of the family. So that's uh, Larkoff and Johnson on Immanuel Kant. I read it a long time ago. I actually had to buy the book again recently in my big book spending spree that I've been on recently. So um, why don't you duck back over to my Linux machine? So that's the university forum. I'm not sure what I've got open here. No, oh, yeah. So this was me looking up the Ring of Gyges, which was uh, mentioned by the philosopher Plato in Book Two of his Republic. It sounded very much like the Ring of Power in the Lord of the Rings. And uh, what else have we got going on here? I've still got the last word on the university forum at the moment. No one's saying anything. I figure I might just uh, have a look at, at what I've been doing today. Yep. Just tidying up a few loose ends. Wow, I think, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, this was me finding a link to the philosophy in the flesh so I could post it at the forum earlier today. And this is me for uh, lecture 10. Lecture 10, that's a, the audio in this window here, and this is. Well, I might as well take you to the front first, so... Uh, this is my Six Sigma wiki, which is where I keep my university notes on my website, jj5.net. And uh, this is the PHI 110 course, PHI 110. And it says I'm studying a Bachelor of Arts this is Phi 110, the Philosophy, Morality and Society subject from Macquarie University undertaken this year. Content is copied from the website. See also. Study-wise and AIMS. The AIMS is the Academic Integrity Module for Students and Study-wise is Study Skills stuff. It's all soft skills sort of stuff. Um, and here's the coursework. So key dates, week start on Monday, weekly template for new weeks. So I've done one, two, three, four weeks having covered an introduction, Epicurean ethics, Stoic ethics, and Aristotle's ethics. And now, actually the course is here. Today is the 22nd. So yesterday, we began week eight. So I've got week five, six, and seven to do before I catch up to week eight. And uh, cultural diversity and moral relativism is in this window over here. Um, week five, cultural diversity and moral relativism. Um, this week we begin the second section of the unit, 
focusing on meta-ethics and meta-ethical questions. This week we examine the relativist challenge to normative ethics. Are some actions right or wrong absolutely, or should the truth of moral claims be considered relative to a culture? And I've been compiling a list of additional reading that might that sort of popped up over the first lectures. As you can see, I've got lecture 9 and lecture 10. This is lecture 10 over here. I'm 14 seconds into it. So I'm, I've done one lecture for week 5 and I'm about to do week 10. But uh, I sort of got sidetracked doing a whole lot of other things today. Uh, so this is what I'm up to. I've got to do the notes. Actually, I, I, uh, I've got work here to do. Listen to the lectures lecture notes, questions, readings, answer the questions and do the activities. So all of that's on my to-do list still. I've just started listening to the lectures. But I got distracted today doing a whole lot of reading. I tell you, I, I have a lot of good books. Um, I have a couple of really terrible books. I read a book today. Let me get it. This one, let me see. Uh, this book. Oh. Coders at Work. Reflection on the Craft of Programming. And the one that I read was Peter Norvig's uh, interview. Peter Norvig's the director of research at Google and he's a very interesting fellow. And uh, it was interesting to hear what he had to say about the craft of programming and uh, approaches to recruitment and problem solving and interesting stuff like that. I, uh, I, I guess I might as well... Um, show you something else that I've done. Uh, let's see. Give me a new window over here. There we go. And if I go... Uni... Uni... See if I can find this. Uh, study. So over here is are uh, the units that I've done. It's a bit hodgepodge, and you can see I started back in two thousand and eight, uh, and and then got sidetracked for six years, and started again over here doing these these units. So I did the Stanford AI class in two thousand and eleven. It was online learning and it was facilitated by uh, Dr. Peter Norvig and Dr. Sebastian Thrun. And uh, this is my artificial intelligence statement of accomplishment, which I'm pretty proud to have. Congratulations, you have successfully completed the advanced track of the introduction to artificial intelligence with a score of 70.9. Your score is based on the average of your six best homework assignments, a midterm examination, and a final examination. So 70.9, that's what I got. And uh, and it, it below here are all of my notes. Ah, speaking of my notes, bring bring back me. There we go. I found this today next to my algorithms book, which I read because Peter Norvig mentioned it. Um, it's over here. Introduction to Algorithms. And I have to say, this stuff just bores the shit out of me. I guess I, if I wanted to be a master of my craft, I really should understand this stuff better than I do. But I really just get bored with it. I don't find in in my in my programming world that I really ever have much to do with algorithms. But yeah, they're they're pretty well pretty exhaustively covered in books like this one. 
but yeah, behind looking behind that was this A4 graph pad, and uh, you can see maths, maths. That's some sort of matrix operations. I don't know anything about matrices. This is some probability stuff. And it's funny because I look at all of this stuff and it's like, I used to understand what I was doing. I knew, I knew what it meant. But now it's all just random, weird, crazy stuff. Like, really, what the fuck does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, there's pages and pages of it, so I won't go. And, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, so I... As I digress today a little bit reading uh, the Norvig article in Coders at Work. And I, I picked up this, More Than Cool Reason, A Field Guide to Poetic Metaphor. I got that from Markov and a guy called Mark Turner. And uh, it, I read the first 10 pages this morning. I think I'll, I'll definitely read this book. It's about, um, well, it's a field guide to poetic metaphor. So it's about the nature of metaphor. And here's another book. This one, Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture. Is that not enough to put you to sleep? I don't know. But uh, yeah, there's some ideas in here which I think will be useful for the software I'm working on at the moment. Which is something else I picked up recently. If you want to have a look... Uh, back over on my yeah here I've got some some code open I started this last night um, it looks like my computer's going to go really slow Yeah, that's just going way too slow. I don't think it's really going to be feasible for me to show you this stuff. How long do I wait before I give up? How long do I wait? Oh, there it goes. So I, uh, I got here. This is the current personal server project. And I've started a new one which uses my new library over here. Personal servers are a tool to help you liberate, secure, and share your personal digital information, and they are the future of personal computing. Well, I hope so. Anyway, <clears throat> speaking of books that I read today, I read this one today from cover to cover, and it is just shockingly bad. And it's funny, I don't know how I came upon this book. I think it was recommended to me by either the Booktopia or the Amazon.com recommend, um, recommendation algorithms. And I don't think I noticed when I bought it, but this book is called Freemason in Search of the Lost West. And I didn't, th didn't notice the Freemasonry bit when I bought it. I just thought I was buying a book in, in Search of the Lost West, which sounded interesting. It's On Morality and Happiness as it says in the bottom there and uh, wow it is the most just trite disjointed nonsense it's crazy and in the same vein recently I read this book The New Consciousness which you know sounded promising but boy it was drivel as well so there's some pretty bad stuff out there uh, and there's two books lately that I got which were just a waste of paper, but it's funny because they're the two books that I've actually read from cover to cover in the other couple of days. So I've got a few other books over here, but if I pull them out now, I won't have anything to talk about next time, and I wonder if there will be a next time. Uh, I don't know. So what, what more can we share? Uh, this is my... Uh, Ooh, 
Yeah, I think that'll probably do. I'm not going to just take everyone through my through my email. So. Uh, I think this has been a really terrible, terrible <coughs> start to this little experiment of mine where I thought I'd keep some sort of like an electronic journal and talk about the things that I was doing. But uh, there's been a lot of gaps and I'm not even sure if the audio is working and uh, I need to go to the toilet and I want to have a smoke. So uh, I'll wrap it up and, and leave it at that for now. But, you know, maybe... We'll see each other again in the future. See ya.